Is the Casket of Souls any good in patch 5.2? Recruit it in the same manner as a Queen Vest, but you can get multiple ones as long as you pay the fat 5,000 gold right fee. The Casket of Souls is a luxury item that has no unit cap. You get other benefits from the right, plus 3 Lord Recruit rank, plus 2 Unit Recruit rank, but that's coincidental. You're getting this for the Casket, because besides the scary lore, you want those souls slamming into the enemy with the benefits of all the tweaks to homing bombardments. Each Casket is a single entity, with 3968 health on Ultra. Armor is 80, but believe me, Focus Fire makes this feel flimsy. Missile resistance of 15 helps a little. Leadership is 60, so it won't crumble at the first sign of trouble. Speed is 26, charge speed of 30, but that still feels a lot faster than the usual 20 of artillery. Melee attack is 20 to start, attack interval 4.3, no splash damage. No splash damage! Melee defense 14, weapon strength 26, with 20 base, 6 armor piercing, and has the power of a single skeleton warrior. Charge bonus 8 and mass 4000. Now that we've established its utter rubbishness in melee, ammunition starts at 20 volleys, range an extremely generous 440 meters, missile strength officially weighing in at 863, and the souls are magical attack, ignoring physical resistance of all kinds and varieties. Each impact is 40 base damage and 90 armor piercing, with a detonation radius of 4, and explosion damage of base 28 and armor piercing 64. There are 7 artillery projectiles, and in the current patch, they will tend to spread out over an infantry unit. Well, they sort of do that naturally anyway. Point being, you do want to target the highest value enemy infantry with this, and after that, normal cavalry, becoming less effective as you get smaller unit sizes and fewer entities. Reload time is 18, not fast. Total accuracy is given as 30 to start, modifying other numbers, and this not being a regiment of renown, it starts at rank 0. Calibration distance is 300, so it's extra inaccurate out to extreme ranges. Calibration area of 70, so a lot of drift even so, but since it's modified by accuracy, you see this thing doing 300, 400, 500 kills in some battles just from the natural course of events. Penetration size is large and max targets penetrated before the explosion is a ridiculous 20, but uh, don't rely on that. I mean, it's arcing down like a mortar anyway, so it's it's going to hit the ground. Just rely on it doing the consistent damage. This is a siege attacker, causes fear, can hide in forest, which can be critical for sieges on some maps or other purposes, is considered undead, as in not a construct, and has the Covenant of Power passive, granting plus 20% wins of magic power recharge or half a normal arcane conduit. That alone is really valuable for your spellcasters. Well, consider it a perk but the power of this unit is mostly in being a reach-out-and-smite-someone artillery piece. In the Redline skills, the casket gets NOTHING! That's right, it actually doesn't get any increases. This is intentional, though we might ask them to change it in a rework someday. Now, it does get love from the tech tree, and this is not insignificant. Ancient Battle Sites provides plus 20% ammunition and a whopping 15% reload time reduction, and Ancient Quarries, last seen in my Necropolis Knights video, as plus 10% missile strength. Aside from Kalida's faction-wide and personal army boss, anyone with the blessing of Isuria, God of the Underworld, either generic Tomb Kings or Arkham the Black, gets casualty replenishment to extra recruitment slots in local province, and a spicy plus 15% missile strength increase for Caskets of Souls only. And the other legendary lords can't get this. Only Arkan and the generics or tech tree ones. As for how you use the Casket of Souls, it's more important to learn how not to use it. It only has a plus 25% damage bonus versus buildings, so while it's devastating to units, it's not something you want to use on siege targets if possible. And if at all possible, you want to keep the unit from targeting an enemy that draws your casket ahead of your battle lines or into the middle of melee. If at all possible, you want it far, far from the melee itself. As for the shots themselves, they're arcing mortar-like magical streams. You most certainly will do friendly fire against engaged lines, but it's nowhere near as random and self-defeating as in past game versions, or with other factions using, let's say, Vampire Coast Mortars. And even those aren't as murderous to your own side as they used to be. At least that's my feeling. 
Point is, you can largely let the casket take care of itself on guard mode and switch targets not broken or fleeing beyond range in quite a few situations. Too many wasted shots on a YOLOing Lord and it's trouble, so you want to catch that and deal with it. But basically you just target the Grave Guard first, then the Crypt Ghouls, then the Skeleton Spearmen, then Warriors or Zombies as a last resort. It's simple, but it's not just how many kills you get, it's what you killed. Short of Micro Disasters, Scarbrand making your casket rampage into melee, like that poor Tomb Prince of mine he killed, cursed the Scarbrand, and stuff like that, your caskets are likely to be huge net positives for your balance of power. So line up and dump your sacks of gold and jewels, pay the piper, and get your slightly used caskets here. You know it's worth it. Take care, and have fun showing your enemies that you have no heart, but you have plenty of souls to spare for the purpose of taking their lives.